Hi y'all, it's good to see you here again. In this video today you are going to learn how Blue Origin went from being a promising relatively new space company with stunning plans for the future to literally being the perfect example of what everyone doesn't want to see anymore in the space industry. But enough with the intro, without further ado, let's go! Blue Origin has not always been that company everyone hates. In fact, in the mid 2010s, it was quite the opposite. Being a fast and innovative company, Blue Origin was able to develop the B1, B2, and B3 engines in just a few years and have prototypes fly as early as 2011. On top of that, the company's goal was to save the planet, no less. Bezos is convinced Earth has to be preserved as a garden and that there is only one planet suited for life in the solar system. The ultimate goal of the company would be to transfer most heavy industries into space in order to preserve Earth. A different approach than SpaceX, but completely valid too. The gigantic New Glenn rocket was announced in 2016, promising a thrilling rivalry with SpaceX and stunning plans for the future. That's around that time that Blue Origin won its first major contract to deliver New Glenn's BE-4 motors to ULA for their upcoming Vulcan rocket. Also, Bezos wanted to change the way space companies were dealing with NASA and other public customers' contracts. Let's hear what he did not like at that time. Uh, the, the Grumman, there were nine competitors for the lunar lander, and Grumman won, in a, the, the RFP was released, and then it was awarded to Grumman six months later. Today, there would be, you know, three protests, and the, win, the losers would sue the federal government because they didn't win. Yeah, this is a place of and what happened then? First, Bezos had other things to focus on. With Amazon Prime, he had to be attending Hollywood meetings all the time. The Washington Post, owned by Bezos, was dealing with the assassination of writer Jamal Khashoggi by agents of the Saudi government, and of course the divorce from his wife Mackenzie, so he was not around to push his vision anymore. In 2017, Bezos changed head management, letting longtime president Rob Meyerson go and hiring Bob Smith. Bob Smith has a more bureaucratic management style, with a traditional aerospace approach, according to his own words. This traditional approach means slower development times and more lobbying. Blue Origin's lobbying was huge and centered about returning to the moon and selling Artemis to the Trump administration. More on that later. The first project to suffer from Bob Smith's approach was the BE-4 engine. This is a first-stage engine, powerful, reusable, and cryogenic. It was originally planned to be ready for 2017, but delays happened, which is quite normal for such a project. But while Meyerson had instituted a hardware-rich approach, more expensive but much faster, Smith stopped that and returned to the traditional slow way of engine development. As a result, we are mid-2021 and still not a single flight-ready BE-4 engine has been produced and the motors might not be delivered in time to ULA for the first launch of their new Vulcan rocket, which of course is a cause of tensions between ULA and Blue Origin. From that point on, everything started to crumble. In 2019, Blue Origin competed against SpaceX and ULA to launch all the US military satellites for the 2022-2027 timeframe. Blue Origin filed a complaint before the award, but lost to SpaceX and ULA in 2020 anyway. It is believed that Space Force officials were concerned with B4 engines delivery issues and they wanted the company to focus on that problem before building its own rocket. Then came the Human Landing System or HLS bit to provide two landings on the moon, but more on that in a few seconds. The only program that was still on track, albeit quite long to deliver, was New Shepard, the space tourism ship. Yes, in the mid-2010s, New Origin wanted to preserve Earth's garden, and a decade later, the only walking program is a small rocket that burns fuel to send rich people on a ride. But let's get back to the HLS contract. As I said, Bob Smith's approach includes lobbying, and Blue Origin lobbied a lot, advocating for a return to the moon. This might have led Bezos and Smith to think that the whole Artemis program was still alive only because of their lobbying, and that NASA owed them for that. That's why when they saw the results of the bid, and that they had lost to SpaceX, they lost it. Instead of maybe filing one formal complaint and getting back to work, because you know the HLS only covers for two landings and there will be plenty more landers to build on the future, they started freaking out. Again, the first complaint was completely legit. Companies have to have the right to file a complaint, but then they offered a $2 billion discount out of their $6 billion offer and threatened to sue NASA if they did not take the offer. And of course, after that, they sued, becoming the very thing they were supposed to end. 
three protests and the win the losers would sue the federal government because real quick if this video was useful to you i would really appreciate if you clicked the like button that would mean a lot to me and thank you very much this soon became a public relations nightmare because people remember how bezos built his fortune pressuring low-wage workers and avoiding taxes while using the country's resources but there's more. Blue Origin then started undermining SpaceX's plans with this graphic and tried to undermine the technical side of SpaceX's proposal. This last part was too much for most employees. They did not like the new management very much. They were disappointed to have lost, but suing NASA, your potential future customer, and talking quack about competitors? That was way too much. Some engineers publicly expressed their sympathy with their friends at other space companies on Reddit. Others just left. At least 17 key leaders and senior engineers left Blue Origin this summer alone. It's okay to have some turnover, but no, we are far beyond that. Anticipating that, Bezos sent a $10,000 bonus when he returned from his successful trip to space, but that's probably not enough to change the spirit about the company, as seen on this Glassdoor approval chart. All this drama is a shame, because Blue Origin still has really interesting plans for the future and highly skilled engineers. Take for instance the project Jarvis to reuse the second stage of the New Glenn rocket. Yes, it takes some ideas from SpaceX's Starship. And so what? If it works, that doesn't bother me at all. Interestingly, the project has been walled off from Blue Origin's general management to allow more innovation. They also are going hard on developing the hardware to allow for in-situ resource utilization or ISRU to live on the moon and more likely extract valuable resources from its ground and asteroids. Blue Origin is at a turning point right now. If they pursue the same trend as during the last few years, I don't think they will stay around for long. And that would be for the best. But if they somehow manage to change what clearly is not working and focus on their core mission, their goal of saving Earth by building a road to space, then I would be thrilled to see a once innovative company propose disruptive concepts and designs once again. And maybe add a bit of competition to a future that seems so overwhelmingly dominated by SpaceX. If you want more information on the BE4 delivery problems to ULA's Vulcan rocket, you should definitely check this video over here.